All right, let us consider our question number five on the trigonometry we are given. Consider the following equation. So there is an equation that we are given, the three sine squared x plus cos squared x minus five equal to seven sine x. From this equation, show that the equation, this one, can be written as this. That is the question. All right, so how can we rewrite this equation? Uh, that's 5.1. We are given our equation as uh, 3 sine squared x plus uh, cos squared x minus 5, which is equal to 7 uh, sine x. That's our trigonometric equation. And uh, as we can see, what we are being asked to, to show that our equation can be written as is just something that is in terms of a sign. We do not have a cos. There is just a sign there. So meaning there is something that we are supposed to do with our cos squared of x, this one. There is something that we are supposed to do with that. So what is the equivalent of a cos squared x? It's a positive, as we can see. So meaning to say, if we were to consider from our identities, remember that a sine squared of x plus a cos squared of x is equal to y, where we can transpose at sign because what we need is a cos. So if you transpose a sign on the other side of the equation, you remain with a cos squared x, which is equal to one minus uh, sine squared x. So what does it mean? It means in place of a cos squared x, we can substitute with its equivalent, which is one minus sine squared x. So meaning we can substitute this, uh, that is three uh, sine squared x plus the part of a cos squared, which is one minus a sine squared x. So this is the part that we just substituted. So as you can see, it's a plus, so it does not affect anything, but in actual sense, you're supposed to have your brackets like this. All right, minus five. Then also we can transpose the sign to the other side of the equation as we saw that one of this side is equal to zero. So that means we can transpose the seven sine x to be a minus seven sine x. It was a positive, so it takes a negative on the other side of the equation. So with this, we can simplify collecting of our like terms. So like I said, this is just a plus one, the bracket there, we are expanding by plus one, so it does not affect anything. So meaning to say, this will just remain like this. So collecting our like terms, this is three sine squared to sine squared. Uh, we're gonna subtract three minus one, that is a two. So three minus one, that is going to be two uh, sine squared of X. Then we have got a sine x, this one, seven sine x minus seven sine x, uh, that is not affected with any other part. Then we move on to the constants. If you check our constants, there's a one and a minus five. So one minus five, this is going to be a minus four. And that is equal to zero. So this is exactly uh, the part that we are being asked to show. So, right? so this is exactly what we're given to show that this will be two sine squared x minus seven sine x minus four is equal to zero. Then on 5.2, hence or otherwise, there are two statements there. Hence, it's a continuation. You already worked with this. This is what you got. So hence, it's from whatever that you got. But otherwise, you can work as it is from here in any other manner, in any other way that you feel like. If you are comfortable to do that. So I would prefer you guys to work with the hands because the hands, it's already a simplified part that you have. You already simplified this whole thing, this one that we see here is this. So if the question is asking you to determine the general solution of, you just start from here because already this is a simplified equation that we are used to. 
this one. So hence, I just have to continue from this. Because all this, it gave us this. All this, it gave us final answer, which is a simplified one. So from this simplified answer, I can determine uh, the general solution. Uh, that's a quadratic a trigonometric equation, so I can use the quadratic formula. I can use factorizations up to me. If I was writing the quadratic formula as x is equal to minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a like this. But this time, because I have a sign of x that I'm supposed to solve for, I'm no longer writing this as x is equal to, but I'll write this as a sign of x. All right, if it is a cos, a cos of x is equal to, uh, is equal to, so the quadratic formula concept does not change. A is equal to two, our B, the coefficient of a, uh, sine x, which is minus seven, our constant, which is minus four. So that means in this case, the sine of x was going to be equal to minus a B, which is a minus seven uh, plus or minus the square root of a B squared, that is a minus seven squared, uh, minus four times A, which is a two times a C, which is minus four, everything over two A, which is two times a two. So like I said, you could have used your factorization still, you are going to have the same thing. Minus and minus, that's a plus, so it's seven plus or minus the square root of, if you were to simplify these numbers under the square root only, they were going to give you 81, everything over two times two, which is a four. So you can separate uh, your square root plus and a minus to obtain the two possible solutions for a sine of X. So the first one was gonna be a four or another one, it was going to give us the sine of X being equal to minus one over two. And in our solution, our X, the sine, I mean the sine of X being equal to this number, if uh, the sine, of x is equal to m, we know that our m is supposed to be greater than or equal to minus one, but less than or equal to one, but less than or equal to one. Our m cannot be this big, uh, cannot be greater than four. Uh, also on your calculator, if you do not know about this, uh, the calculator can help you. Remember, you need the reference angle where the reference angle is shift uh, sign, which is arc sine of a four. So if you are going to try this, you're going to see that there's no solution at end. So that's our sine X cannot be equal to four. This is something that you are just supposed to know from this idea, meaning to say, we are going to work from the sine of X, which is equal to minus one over two. As we know that on the reference angle, uh, in order for us to have the general solution, you need the reference angle where the reference angle is simply uh, it's a sine, so it's going to be an arc sine of one over two. Ignore the fraction, I mean, ignore the negative concept that you're given that there's a negative there. Just determine arc sine of one over two direct on your calculator, which is going to give you a 30 degrees. So the negative is there as a conclusion to say, where is this sign being a negative from our quadrants? We've got the casti concept. The sign is being a negative where? in the third and where in the fourth quadrant, in the second and in the first, sign is positive there. So we need to determine the general solutions they're supposed to be taken where this sign now is a negative. So sign is a negative where in these two quadrants. So in the third quadrant, guys, I talked about this, that your X is gonna be taken as 180 degrees plus the reference angle, you add the reference angle in the third quadrant. So meaning to say our X was gonna be 180 degrees plus the reference angle of 30 degrees. Okay, this is a sign, you add 360 degrees times, times Y times K, uh, where this K is every integer that we're gonna talk about. So at the end, uh, this was going to give us 210 plus 360 degrees times K, all right. This is for the one in the third quadrant where sine is a negative. But sine is also a negative where in the fourth quadrant and in the fourth quadrant, remember I said X is equal to 360 degrees minus the reference angle. So meaning to say the other general solution that you're going to have was going to be taken as 360 degrees minus the reference angle 
minus 30 degrees, all right? You're going to subtract the reference angle there, plus 360 degrees times K. So that is what you are going to have at the end. So with this, we have got two solutions possible, uh, presentation of our general solution. So this is going to be 330 degrees plus 360 degrees times K. This is our final answer at the end. So as we can see, we had two possible solutions, this part and also this part at the end, where this K is supposed to be an integer. This is how you determine your general solutions. So you just have to figure out, am I working with a trig of a sign? Am I working with a trig of a cos? Is it of a tan that I'm working with? But the idea is the same. Then uh, what you just need for, uh, remember for a tan, you add 180, the period of a, of a tan is 180 degrees. These are your typical exam questions. Work on these typical questions as you prepare yourselves for the exams ahead of time.